as the consoler in chief, if, if you will. The president is the commander in chief. She has written a letter to school children around the country. Obviously, a woman who ca called her own daughters, but also a woman as first lady cast in a completely new role. Herself grabbed and shuttled by the Secret Service to a secure location when these strikes happened. So, this an event that transformed the country, perhaps as well transformed the role of the public role of our first lady. John, thank you. Our senior White House correspondent. John King with us this afternoon as we are a little bit past 3 o'clock Eastern time. For those of you who may just be joining us, let me uh, hopscotch a little bit around New York and give you a sense of where uh, the situation stands. Um, the significant concern, 30 blocks away down at the Trade Center building now, centers on two buildings, uh, the American Express building and this building, the building you're looking at, which is One Liberty Plaza. Um, we talked a great deal with you about this time yesterday afternoon about One Liberty Plaza and uh, this is a building that at uh, this time yesterday was seen to be in danger of collapsing. We heard then uh, really just a couple of hours ago that engineers felt that the building was safe. That report seems now uh, to be uh, uh, not true or not accurate at, at least uh, because officials now are very concerned about One Liberty Plaza. They are also very concerned about the American Express building, uh, which lies to the south of the World Trade Center uh, building. There was smoke. Uh, smoke has been seen coming out of some of the uh, mid floors and upper floors of the building. Uh, we had a report from uh, one of our producers on the scene, uh, quoting an official down there saying that the building is listing some. And so uh, people who had been working in the building, the building had been used uh, on a normal business day, and how long ago does it seem that there was a normal business day? American Express, Lehman Brothers, others had offices there. In recent days, it's been used as a triage center, and as so many buildings uh, down around the Trade Center have been, has also been used as a makeshift morgue. That, that building is in some danger uh, as well. So officials have evacuated those buildings. Uh, they have moved people away from the area for their own safety that is slowing down and complicating uh, the search and recovery operation. On the search and recovery side of this, uh, we, with some considerable joy, I will tell you, uh, can report that five New York City firefighters were pulled out of an SUV that had been buried in the collapse of the Trade Center buildings. Uh, they came out to the cheers of the rescuers, uh, and they are fine two and a half days later, they are fine. So that here in New York is where we are. We watch these buildings and we hope for more good news out of the rescue site. Judy Woodruff joins us now in Washington. Judy, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Aaron. Uh, I have to say all of us in Washington who of course been watching uh, the coverage of uh, celebrating, uh, even, even the lives of five people uh, is something to celebrate, uh, uh, given the, the grim stories all the way around. And Aaron, uh, I know uh, you're watching uh, very, very closely what's happening with those buildings in, in Lower Manhattan. And of course, we'll come back to you uh, as soon as there are more developments. But we want to bring you up to date now on, uh, on the investigations, uh, which are proceeding apace. Uh, CNN's justice correspondent, Kelly Arena, uh, has been reporting for us all day long on the progress that's been made. And Kelly, uh, we know that now they're talking about uh, 18 uh, hijackers having been involved. Tell us uh, uh, what you've been able to learn about that. That's right, Judy. Uh, FBI Director Robert Mueller and the Attorney General John Ashcroft said that they have identified at least 18 hijackers. Now, this isn't a guess here. They say that they have uh, names and information on 18. Uh, Justice is considering whether or not to release a list of, of names to the public. That decision has not yet been made. Uh, they did break down for us, though, uh, how many hijackers were on each plane, and we can, we can show you that. Uh, United Flight 175, which uh, crashed into the World Trade Center, had five hijackers, as did American Flight 11, um, which crashed into the World Trade Center. Both of those had five on board. United Flight 93, which crashed in Pennsylvania, had four hijackers. And American Flight 77, which crashed into the Pentagon, also had four hijackers. Now, unless intelligence uh, proves otherwise, uh, 18 is the working number right now. Uh, it is not 
completely solid, though. Things, things are in flux very much right now. Um, Attorney General John Ashcroft also saying that all of those hijackers, Judy, were ticketed passengers. Now, Kelly, it, it, presumably, clearly, the hijackers themselves are dead. Uh, so the focus is on the people who were working with them, right? That's right, on finding associates. And the FBI um, has fanned out across the country trying to link the threads together, trying to find family members or friends or associates that could take them back to identifying um, operating terrorist cells within the United States or outside the United States to possibly uh, get a handle on um, who may be offering financial backing or to find if there's any link uh, between uh, these, these hijackers and a larger terrorist organization. Uh, the FBI has questioned uh, many people. Some of those have been detained, Judy, and, and let me be clear on that point. No one has been arrested at all in direct connection with the terrorist attacks, but there have been some people detained because as the FBI tracks people down, they find out that they're in, in violation of uh, immigration laws, for example, and so they're detained for that reason. Um, there have been uh, several who have been arrested because they were wanted on other state and local charges, um, but there has been some confusion out there uh, with you know FBI having people in custody directly connected with this. That is not the case just yet. The FBI says it's, it is pursuing thousands of leads at this point. So, Kelly, where does the investigation go from here? Do they simply just pursue these leads, you describe them as thousands, one by one by one, or do they, or do they have sort of an overarching sense of where they go from here? Well, right now, you know, this is a very early stage of this investigation. Uh, the, the FBI is, is pursuing many avenues, search warrants, subpoenas, so on. First, we heard that they had 8,000 uh, personnel working, 4,000 agents, 3,000 support staff, and then not to mention you know, nearly 1,000 working in FBI labs. We are now told today that that, uh, that number has increased. In fact, there are 20 uh, overseas FBI offices that are now directly involved in this investigation. We did hear earlier from FBI Director Robert Mueller, who explained some of the investigative tactics that the FBI was using throughout the country. Uh, when we receive leads, uh, we have followed those leads. We are interviewing any number of people across the country. The number of special, uh, the number of FBI offices that are involved in the investigation, directly involved in the in investigation has expanded. And they are uh, interviewing witnesses. They are, where necessary, obtaining search warrants, uh, obtaining uh, grand jury subpoenas, and whatever is necessary to obtain the evidence to uh, identify the, more particularly, identify the particular hijackers and anyone associated with them. Now, Judy, what could provide even more help uh, would be the black boxes. None of those have been retrieved yet, but today uh, we did hear that the, the one that was most likely to be retrieved is, is the, the flight that did crash in Pennsylvania because it is the only one that went directly into the ground rather than into a building, and investigators actually have access to that, that crime scene. Back to you. All right, Kelly Arena, who has been following uh, this investigation uh, uh, for the last several days, uh, ever since uh, these acts, uh, incidents uh, took place on Tuesday morning. And now we want to go to the White House, uh, to our senior White House correspondent, John King, for an update on what President Bush has been doing today. John, we know the president uh, today uh, dealing both with his own emotions and also proclaiming that America will will uh, be victorious through all of this. We're seeing, that's right, Judy, we're seeing many sides of the president on this day, even just in the past recent, in the past several hours. And you may see cars pulling in the driveway behind me now, that part of the president's role as well. Members of the Virginia and New York delegations, obviously the two states most affected by this tragic terrorist strikes, now here at the White House to meet with the president and other administration officials on the ongoing relief, recovery, and rebuilding efforts, as well as to get an update on the status of the investigation. Now, the president will also meet later today with his national security team yet again, CNN and told by senior administration sources that increasingly those conversations turning to potential, emphasis on potential U.S. military responses to these strikes as the investigation, as Kelly Arena just updated us on, continues. And as part of that, a broad effort by the entire administration to build an international coalition of support. And as part of that, some interesting developments just in the past hour or so. We know Secretary of State Colin Powell spoke earlier today to the Pakistani President General Pervez Musharraf, 
Mr. Powell presenting a specific list, we are told, of what the United States wants in cooperation from the Pakistani government. Now, Pakistan is a neighbor of Afghanistan, the home of the suspected terrorist Osama bin Laden. Pakistan, one of the few governments that recognizes the Taliban as the government of Afghanistan. After that conversation, the State Department said it was a favorable conversation, and CNN just moments ago received a statement from President Musharraf, General Musharraf, saying, quote, Pakistan is committing all of its resources in an effort coordinated with the United States to locate and punish those involved in these horrific acts. Now, the Bush administration saying it wants to put that promise to the test, but that could be a significant development in the diplomatic effort here and in the investigation as well, as the U.S. government believes the Pakistani government has quite a bit of information about the operations of the bin Laden network. Now, the president discussed all this earlier today, a telephone call placed to the governor of New York and the New York City mayor to offer them more federal support in the ongoing relief effort up there. The president also then turning, looking toward the investigation. He called this the first war of the 21st century, and Mr. Bush said, make no mistake about it, the United States would react with resolve. Now's the time for the country to be united, and, uh, um, you know, through the tears of sadness, I see an opportunity. You know, make no mistake about it, this nation is sad. But we're also tough and resolute. And now's an opportunity to do uh, generations a favor by coming together and whipping terrorism, hunting it down, finding it, and holding them accountable. Uh, the nation must understand this is now the focus of my administration. And as part of that effort, Judy, we heard earlier today the Under Secretary of Defense, Paul Wolfowitz, talking about the fact, he said it matter-of-factly, that fighter jets are flying combat air patrols over Washington, D.C. and other major U.S. cities as a result of this. And just in the past few minutes here at the White House, we have seen the Secret Service once again, and they won't tell us why just yet, push back the security perimeter. They had opened up Lafayette Park across from the White House in the past 10 minutes or so. Uniformed Secret Service agents going back out across the park and clearing the park, saying they are extending the security perimeter a bit farther away from the White House. No word as yet as to whether that is being done simply as a precaution or whether there was some new specific threat here at the White House. Judy. Now John, we know uh, that uh, you're waiting there at the White House for the daily briefing from the President's spokesman, Ari Fleischer, as we wait for uh, for, uh, for that. Uh, why the public focus on Pakistan? I mean, Pakistan is surely not the only country uh, that has offered, uh, uh, you know, some sort of, if not support, at least turned a blind eye in some instances to what these, uh, the bin Laden groups and other uh, groups involved in terrorism have been involved in. Certainly not the only country to offer support. The administration saying it is overwhelmingly encouraged by words of support from key U.S. allies like Great Britain, like France, like Germany. Also words of support from less predictable nations like China and Russia. But remember, the United States government has been displeased with what it has heard from the Taliban in Afghanistan, saying earlier, right after this attack, that they saw no way Mr. bin Laden could be responsible for this. Now let's go inside, listen to the White House Press Secretary, Ari Fleischer. I want to give everybody... Uh a report on the president's activities for the day and then share with you some information about uh, what the various agencies are doing to combat this terrorist attack. I'll, there is no evacuation of the OEOB. No. Uh, I'll, I'll be explaining everything. Uh, the president today has made a series of phone calls to world leaders. He has spoken to Prime Minister Koizumi of Japan, Prime Minister Berlusconi of Italy, Lord Robertson of NATO, Crown Prince Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, and Egyptian President Mubarak. Uh, as you know, earlier today he spoke with Mayor Giuliani and Governor Pataki to express his concerns about events up in New York and inform them, of course, that he will be going there tomorrow. Uh, the President also visited a local hospital today. I'm going to have a little bit more to say of that shortly. Um, and beginning in just a few minutes, the President will meet with members of Congress from the Virginia area and the New York area to talk about the ongoing efforts of the federal government to be of assistance to the families and to the victims. Tomorrow will be a National Day of Prayer and Remembrance. The President will attend a church service here at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. And the President is asking all Americans at their lunch hours to go and attend a, a church, a synagogue, a mosque, a place of their own choosing for worship, to say a prayer in assistance to the families and the victims of this horrible 
incident. As for the activities of the, uh, the federal government, let me fill you in on several activities, including the one Helen just asked about. Uh, the Department of Defense will be announcing the names of those who are 